Right, but this brings me to my final hydra-headed question. Now, you happen to be one of the very few people who, despite being past the age of 90, still drive hundreds of, mi- hundreds of miles across state lines. You still mentor actively, at least aspiring speakers. And most importantly, you remain mentally agile. I'm, 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 <laughs> how do I put it now? I can testify to that. Um, you read and you write with much the same passion as you, when you, I mean, way, uh, many, many decades before now when you began your journey. Uh, again, I said, I can testify to that because I, I interact with you regularly online. And, you know, you, for instance, your book, Bust Lose, was just published this year, 2015, in your 91st year on Earth. And I'm aware that you have a second book that you're working on. I mean, I doubt that there are many people publishing serious works of this nature past 90 years of age. Most people would probably be taking it easy and telling you they've achieved all there is to achieve in life. So, I mean, I've come across people far less accomplished than you are, who are 10 to 40 years or younger than you, 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 you are, and yet they display little or no drive to live with purpose the way you do. In fact, I had one 80-year-old who, who told me once that he had done all there, <laughs> there was to be done in life and was only interested in resting to, in his final days on earth and things like that. I mean, that's someone who's at least 10 years younger than you are. So, but in light of all those things I just mentioned, what is it that drives you to keep exploring new frontiers of personal achievement the way you keep doing? And this tale is rooted in my observations when I was four years old and getting my bare ass beaten hard by my father's handmade cat of nine tails which, by the way, he insisted I watch him manufacture from a length of clothesline, putting a knot in every tail. Later, by the way, when he had to remake that instrument, he put two knots in every tail. This was the father who brought me into the world. I found myself able to detach from his bestial actions and... As if I were a separate entity, I was able to observe his actions. I did not then know the words I now am able to use. I discovered that I could enter the witness state and notice, or rather, and note what was going on. Yes, the small boy that I was was receiving stinging lashes on my bare bottom and I discovered what Roberto Asagioli calls the witness state. I retained that competence all of my life. I still retain that competence. I can step out of a scene while still there physically. Others around me do not know I am doing this. So starting at age four, I find myself able to detach and reach findings about the event transpiring around me. And in my book, Bus Loose, I share how to do this. Now along with this competence, I'm sensitive to the nuances, the deeper meanings of what is going on. I am caught, engaged by what I see as the difference I can make in the well-being of those around me. My 30-plus years in sales, at which I did excel to the degree that I was able to buy and love living in an upscale ocean view home in Malibu, California. All this caused me to look at my life and see that with my competence, I was not serving the creator of us all to the degree that my talent made possible. So I walked away. I created and taught a seminar in the Santa Monica area for four years. I called it the Personal Achievement Training because what I taught people consisted of the principles of personal achievement. 
something I had learned starting from nowhere. The then young and unknown John Gray, who 10 years later was to write the book Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, and the young unknown Jack Canfield were among my students in the late 1970s through 1982. Odds are that some of what... Let's start that sentence again. Odds are that some of what they proceeded to teach in their continuing successful career was harvested as they sat at my feet many years ago. In late 1982, I started speaking throughout the United States for a seminar company. And by 1985, they went broke. So I started speaking on my own. I started promoting my own programs. By 1989, I felt that I could make more of a difference by educating aspiring speakers. And I made that the major focus of my activities. By 1997, that was eight years later, I expanded my universe to include the Western world. I traveled to Australia and New Zealand in one direction, to the UK and Ireland in another direction, and all over North America to all of the major cities. This went on for quite a few years, 15 years, I believe, and by 2012, my traveling days were over. There is just so much you can take of airplanes and (laughs) sleeping rooms and all of the excitement that goes with travel. My speaker mentoring continues and will continue. However, that takes only a sliver of my time. Okay. Where do you see yourself five to ten years from now and what will you be doing? I envision three books written, published, and selling at least moderately. I see myself being interviewed both on radio talk shows and also a few TV shows. Most important, I see my principles and attitudes being circulated and emulated and making a difference for many, many thousands of people. How do you see age and aging? Do you agree that age is just a number and that one is only as young or old as one thinks she or he is? We cannot avoid getting older chronologically. We can avoid getting older spiritually and mentally. We can persist in making a positive difference, at least among people who are receptive to the philosophy we radiate. What advice do you have for those who let themselves fizzle out as they age? Probably because, for instance, they are comfortable, they have material wealth, or they just have a love of ease. Uh, these are people who let themselves fizzle out when they still have a lot of a lot they can share with the world to help others like you are doing. What advice do you have for such people? My first response to that, Teo, is this, that I offer no advice for such people. They've chosen to get out of the game. I choose to stay in the game. Such people, people who walk away from what they could be doing to add value to the world, such people are still autonomous 
and they have the right to be who they are. I'm reminded of something that Earl Nightingale said in his classic speech, The Strangest Secret. He said exactly these words, The architect of the universe didn't build a stairway leading nowhere. Well, I find myself able to hold a light high on that stairway. And for as long as I breathe the sweet air of this planet, I intend to hold my light high. To hold my light high, Teo, to illuminate the way for the universe of lives that I'm able to touch. <laughs>